his standard A family. It's a 1956, I think it's 64 year old. Um, it's just a rusty piece of shit really. I built it just because it's it's funny. Like no one really knows what it is, it's quite a rare old English car. They turned into Triumph from Standard and that's where they carried on. That's why they, they ended in about 1962 or something like that. The older, the, well the later badges, sorry, instead of just saying Standard underneath, just a Standard Triumph. So that's when they merged into Triumph and then carried on from there. So it, after, this is basically the exact same as the Triumph Herald. So you get suspension in that front. I started out with a Clio, bad boy. 1.2 petrol, fastest car I ever owned. Checkered roof on some fake BBS. <laughs> and for some reason I had another Clio, 1.5 diesel, with a newer shade. And then from then, I got into Volkswagens, had a Mark II Golf, uh, ABF conversion, a kind of a Chave Bay on air, Roll cage, or a bit of a show cage, car up seats, all that rubbish. Try to keep it to period spec. Then I, at the same time as that, I added, well, it'd be the Mark III Scirocco, like the new shape, um, as a daily. Ended up bagging that on some rope form. I got an S2000, so we went for a bit of a jack turn. Nearly ripped it off a few times. Killed Archer, so we wide bodied it, cut it all up as low as it could possibly go. Smashed a few splitters. And then I started working like 60 miles away from home. So for some reason I got bored and I sold that and had a new A5 for a while. And then only that, that was just quite obvious. Just a standard build to drive every day, like 120 mile round trip. And uh, then when I started working close to home, I got Golf R, went Mark 6 for a year and then bought this just for something different to build. I started getting, I got into cars because when I was 16 I started working at a garage and then that's where I, I'd already been into cars but then a few lads of there were modifying old golfs and that so that's where I first got into it and then it just progresses into it. I'd say like a diagnosed obsession where you just ruin your life but it's all good fun. I, I'd say I've owned it for probably a year or so, maybe just short. It was probably last last November I bought it, around that time I think. So it was kind of a winter build. I rushed to get it in some sort of state for UD, for the driver's collection trade stand. And um, then the show season ended, so it's just been sat in the garage ever since. We've had a few drives with it, it drives through it. Fairly uncomfortable, but it's uh, it's good fun to drive. It keeps you on your toes. Time working on it, I've spent quite a while, a few late nights and long afternoons. Um, but if I don't mention Alex Downs, he spent a lot longer than me working on it. It was basically one big hole until he put, uh, I think, a full T5, an RS4 wing, and basically fully rebuilt bottom. It was there were no floor pans in it basically, all fully rotted through. A subframe had rotted out to um, to sill, so it weren't the safest car, so we were driving it around for quite a while. Uh, Chloe, I'd say got a wet a few times in it, but in a in a rainy sense, as soon as there were a big hole in the floor, go through a few big puddles and uh, it liked to come shooting through. So yeah, it were at Alex's for quite a few weeks while I did a lot of welding on it. And then they did even more welding on it when I decided it weren't low enough and we had to cut all the top marks up. The first week I moved into the new house and we were sat in the garage till probably 10 o'clock at night welding and grinding. So I made a good impression on my neighbours. This is the glorious 805cc engine. Had 25 brake horsepower from new. Uh, everything's completely standard apart from air filter just on top of carb because all that used to happen with the original ones it were just a, a massive cast piece that used to rust and rot and then all metal particles would just fall into carb which obviously weren't good for no one so uh, that's just been swapped out with just a, just a random air filter that fit and then only the other thing that's been done to engine wise is it's just been swapped from positive earth just to make battery life um, from a newer battery and that side of things a bit easier but everything else is completely standard as you can see from the absolute 
shit state that it's in, but it makes it look quite amusing. Yeah, I wouldn't really say there's much to talk about inside this car. There's no real glove box, there's no centre console. Headlight switch, ignition switch, got me heater, best windscreen heater, got wiper blades that move but don't actually do what a wiper blade should do, and then just manual choke. The best feature on the car is the indicator switch. And it gives you a little bullet. It's quite amusing. And then the handles that fall off every time you shut the door. I thought this fell off every time. It fell off that time. Uh, yeah, so everything's solid on the car. Uh, funny, good, funny story about the door handles is I once told Chloe that you lock the door by pulling them towards you just as we were going around the corner. She pulled the door handle to think she was locking it and the door flew open. Seeing as like bench seats with no seat belts, she very nearly fell outside the car. So that was probably the best thing that happened that day. But yeah, stick. And a gear stick that smashes your knee every time you change gear. So it's all good. We got it all out of SOE because if I don't keep mentioning Alex, it'll fall out of me. Because uh, we both put too much effort in. Fronts were supposed to be an easy thing, seeing as it should have been a triumphal setup, but nothing fit like it was supposed to. Spent too much money on a full suspension kit for an Herald, um, gas coil on us. Springs didn't fit because bodies were too big. Uh, only thing that we managed to get to work was shocker. And then, but then shock them too big to work with standard spring, so then I'm to cut springs down, probably half size of them, uh, extend, extend top mount with probably six inch, and then fully max everything out. Now, front end, tractor ends, and not racks it directly through middle of the spring near enough. So, if you hit a big bump, it likes to grab tractor ends and chuck you into the middle of the road, but it keeps you on your toes while you're driving it. <laughs> There's a lot of camber up front just because of the setup, uh, like three ball joints, and uh, they're all weirdly adjustable, but it just drags front end in. But it gives you a pretty sick amount of camber. Rear end is just like a standard leaf setup, but just rusty and old. I had to get some new new bolts, they're just, just some random size that I found. Um, just get some spacers for the rear leaf and then just flip spring on back and then uh, well brackets to stop axle twisting and diff going through body of car but then yeah, on relocate all fuel lines to stop them being dragged out uh, but it's pretty low now it can't go much lower unless I engine raise it which is full subframe because subframe and sumps it's probably just under an inch off the floor it don't look that body low but engine subframe lines it's it's pretty stupid so it's good um what one change about the car is just the bodywork patina it's all about a bit of character mm. Fact, I uh, from purists it's a bit of both uh some seem to love it just because it's everything seems to be concourse that's built out of the fuel that there is 25 and i still all the junior membership standard owners club because they're all minimum 60 i think they seem that way anyway. Uh, so they're all like perfect concourse cars from when they were younger. There's never, there's not anything that's um, like patinaed and this low. So they either, it, it's really it's really split on any forums just because of, it's the opposite. So, it, so they either find it cool because it's something different or I should not be ruining a car like this. As my favorite thing about a car is weird, no one knows what it is. Uh, everyone seems to just think it's an Harry Potter car. But just the interior, just because it's so it's exactly how it were 64 years ago. Luckily, it's pushed to start, even though it has got a cranking handle, just in case we break down. Because there's that much play in the steering rack, there's, there's probably a metre turning circle either side before it actually <laughs> starts to turn. So it's good. Hello? <laughs> Take 27. Uh, next thing I'm going to do with car. Is they either make it more drivable or engine swap, which it currently drives, so it's probably an engine swap, uh, just to make it a bit of better cruiser on motorways, get a bit more power. So you add 
25 brick from new 64 years ago. So there's not very many of them left. Um, a good swap is just like 1500, 1500 Triumph Herald engine, which basically just pops straight in them. But then it's not too much power that's going to split it in half. 